Um, Pillsbury uh, has purchased Wicks Agriculture, which was big in the uh, procurement of edible beans. If you'll remember back about three years ago, Pillsbury purchased Green Giant. So there you have Pillsbury, Green Giant, and Wicks, all of those, that territory four years ago is now basically in one unit. Um, some of the other examples that might be of interest to you that uh, we're dealing with, um, I mentioned ConAgra. I have a Dun and Bradstreet report on ConAgra here. Um, the company reports three segments as follows. Agriculture, 32.8% of the 82 sales. Uh, grain, 21.5%. And food, 45.7%. The subsequent, with the subsequent acquisition of PV Company in July of 82, the grain operations, principally milling, are now the largest segment. Overall, however, there are numerous functions, and the following are the six principal individual operations of the company. Flour milling, poultry processing, production of fertilizers and blending plants, grain marketing, production of animal feeds, and production of seafood products. The three, the three segments are described as follow. Agriculture provides products and services primarily to agricultural markets. United Agri Products formulates and distributes agricultural chemicals and animal feeds and health care products. The U.S. formula feeds and fertilizers business markets products mainly in the southeast and northwest, and they go on and give information. Here's what it says about the grain section. Provides grain-related ingredients and services primarily to food industry markets. ConAgra, after July of 82, PV acquisition now has 25 flour mills in the U.S. and one in Puerto Rico, plus an oat mill and two dry corn mills. The company is now the largest white flour miller in the U.S. and a leading supplier of flour to commercial baking industry. Private label flour, corn meal mixes are sold nationally. The grain merchandising business buys, sells, and moves large volumes of grain through a system of specialty companies, storage facilities, and rail and barge operations in mid-America. This function was also enlarged with PV acquisition and also provides feed ingredients, feed manufacturers, and wholesalers, and exporters. Now, the, the concerns that the organization has always voiced about vertical integration and elimination of competition has never been at a faster pace, although it's uh, sometimes you don't feel the effects of it because they keep the same old names. For example, did you know that Continental Grain Company now owns Wayne Feeds? Wayne Feeds is owned by Continental Grain Company. ADM has just purchased another line of feeds similar to Wayne Feeds, and I can't say the name of it to you off the top of my head here today. But this is what um, individual producers down at the local country level uh, may recognize two or three alternatives of where to take his specialty product. And in fact, the uh, results of where that product is going and the bids that are being generated at each of those points uh, may be one and the same. Something to be uh, conscious of, and I hope that uh, not only uh, it gives you some information, but the information I've been going over with you here is the type of information that our credit people are looking at us to tell us, uh, no, you can't sell any more product to that buyer. Now, it's some important, and those of you who have been in this over the years know, I.S. Joseph Company is, has been our major buyer in sunflowers. They are, as a separate corporation, they do have ownership in the Velva crushing plant. They are, uh, my last understanding, 50% owners of it, anyway. And we, of course, we 
we've known that in NFO. Uh, the take the Velva plant, for example, uh, a company, Staley, that's big in crushing of uh, beans and that, uh, soybeans and so forth, they're a principle behind the Velva plant. Um, on the way back from the North Dakota State Convention, we stopped at Velva uh, to ask them how close we were to filling our contract and basically make a PR visit while we were there. Bob Lewis was with me and Merlin Merkins. And uh, I think Bob had his first tour of the plant. I had been there once before when I had some meetings in Minot. Um, but an interesting thing is they've made some significant changes at their plant. If you'll remember, Enderlin was billed as the one that was going to put out the right protein meal. They were going to have it the same as soybean, 42, and the other plants weren't taking as many of the hulls out. They were putting out a 30 to 35 percent meal. Well, um, Velva has changed over now, so they're putting out a 35 percent meal, and, I mean a 42 percent meal, and they were bragging about that and telling how they had the best quality oil of anybody and so forth. And so we got their uh, pitch while we were there. Uh, I guess one last one that I had here from Dun and Bradstreet, and it doesn't relate to sunflowers specifically, but it's another sign of, of the same kind of a symptom that I'm talking about. It's up in your area, and that is um, Dakota bean is the same as Grant L. Q. and Company. Grant L. Q. and Company is a company we've done business with on and off over the years in Michigan and been big in beans in Michigan, but they've just acquired the facilities of what they call Dakota Bean, and they operate under Dakota Bean. Now, Grant L. Q. and has, has owned what's called Lakeland Bean in Minnesota for years. Lake, Lakeland is owned by Kewen, but so is Dakota Bean. So there you have two names in the country in the same area now that are owned by Grant L. Kewen Company out of Michigan. So uh, that's just another indication of that uh, type of thing going on. Uh, I'd like to, uh, for those who don't know, I'd like to recognize... Uh, Bob and Delton and Warren, who keep people in the sunflowers, along with Jack Christensen in the field, have contact with the growers on a regular basis and try to take the service calls at the West Fargo office and so forth. Bob, uh, Bob Lewis from Perm, Minnesota. Warren Doubles from Fergus Falls, Minnesota. And Delton Minder, who is... Uh, got calluses on his flanks from talking to farmers for 16 years as a man down the road and is uh, the state president of South Dakota also. So I, if there aren't any other questions, uh, I'd like to thank you for being here. If there are other questions, either in the meeting or individually, I'll be here for a while. Just talk into it. Yeah, I did misspeak in regard to the statement of I.S. Joseph's involvement in a sunflower crushing plant, I said that was the crushing plant at Velva. That is incorrect. They are involved in the National Sun Industries plant at Enderlin, North Dakota. <laughs>